It was snow, though, right? Oh well, yeah, I couldn't. Okay. Get here, I can't but, remember but what doesn't what mean was going doesn't mean I didn't feel bad yeah. for not being able to get here. No, I understand. So I understand. Okay, look at this fabulous wall of guitar. I think I think okay. So looking at what I'm seeing here, uh huh, this looks fine. Uh huh. You need a hat. <laughs> what? What do you, you? Is that a commentary on my haircut? No, no. Here, switch switch spots with me, real quick. Okay. Because the light up here is different. It's reflecting off my off of my head. Yeah, I think. I okay, so see what you look like now? Mm hmm Okay, now switch back with me and see if you look I, I think you might no <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 I'm not okay. Really sure what I'm supposed to be looking at here. I have a hat in the car. I could go get one. Okay, so see how ten minutes to get get from where I am to, to where I need to get. I think there's just more light. I Okay, so here's the thing. I have light covering up my face. All right, I have I have a, a brim covering up my face. Oh, I see. There. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. No, I don't know. Hey, everybody. This is Matt. We're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Thank you, uh, uh, Doug, a.k.a. Slacker Deluxe. That wall, wow! I know, right? So we spent. Don't do that. So it is. It is. It is light reflecting off my forehead. You can go ahead and say it, Chris. You have a real huge forehead. You need a hat to cover up that forehead. Maybe a little pancake. <laughs> well, we could put some 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 pancake. I, I drop. I draw the line at mascara, though. I believe it's foundation. So, what do you guys think of the background that we have? That's brand new for today. We just did it today here at the bunker in the undisclosed location um, in Northern Colorado somewhere. And uh, what do you guys think? I'll be honest. It, it took, it was harder to put the, um, <clears throat> the, the hangers into that brick than I thought it was going to be. It was yeah. not easy. You know, yeah. we, I knew the mortar was going to be pretty easy. Yeah. The top screw, but yeah. that bottom screw was a real bitch. It was a real P in the A. Yep. Hey, uh, so yeah. So, so I, I think that you guys look, do you guys think we have a cool wall like Phil McKnight has? Ours is in an undisclosed location. That's His right. Is in the like the lower level of his home. We we believe, we believe that it's it. yeah. I we don't I, know. I think I heard him say that. That's not a shot at. No, Phil. no. Yeah. So, uh, so speaking of Phil McKnight, did you guys get a load of the Phil McKnight video that uh, that he featured us on? Um, that was really cool. A couple of them. It's the same. It's the same video. So you know, on his Friday uh, uh, live chat. Um, he, he said, uh, uh, it's like, it's like two hours long, right? Yeah. It starts, um, an hour before our thing on, on Fridays. Okay. And then and it goes into the night in, into the wee hours of the morning. Yeah. So, but, but for 15 minutes of his live stream, he had our challenger guitar, not unlike this one. And, um, yeah, I want to take, I want to, I want to see what Dylan has to say here. He says, uh yous look fantastic you sound fantastic i want to come hang out with yous thank you dylan he didn't say it like that but yeah joy loves to see the guitars on the wall so um hi brian hi michael hi eric hi brian other brian hi paul um hi ss so hi uh 64 community you know who that is i believe it's trevor right and that's mike i believe mike yeah uh, Seal Beach Mike. Oh, six. Oh, okay. Mike, did you get the uh, the one and only um, Challenger Deluxe carved top, all solid body? Because there's last uh, Friday. Friday. Did it get shipped to Friday? It shipped. No. Oh, no, it shipped. Revealed it. Must have. Oh, that's right. It shipped so you Monday shipped it morning. Monday, but yeah. did it go out Monday? I think so. Well, he might have. Did I don't it go leave Tuesday, but it could still be there. He says he got it today. Oh my God, it's cool. insane. Oh, let me make sure. Okay, it is. I, I can't read. Okay, so good. yeah, man, that's awesome, man. It's only two days. For I years. love, love, love that guitar, and I want to make more of them. Um. Okay, so there's so much going on. So, um, Phil McKnight was featuring our one of the neat things about this wall of guitars is we can just pick them up featured uh, a, a, ch a guitar not unlike this challenger level two maple top with the uh, fancy maple um this one's a little different though because it has uh this has a uh, black kingwood fretboard his has a rosewood fretboard mm -hmm. and this one has a three-piece maple neck and his had a five-piece maple walnut maple walnut maple neck which we still have. Actually, we don't. We had a couple of those, and some some people bought them because they said, "I want one just like Phil's." So, 
But don't worry, crunch all you want. We'll make more, right, Chris? That's right. Um, I got a little hungry with that walnut, maple, walnut, maple, walnut. I know, thing. I know right? It's like maple. pancakes. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. I'll have that. <laughs> What's that going to smell like? <laughs> um, and I'm going to, guys, I'm going to get to your questions uh, if as they come up. Oh, oh, uh, Brian says he got the Leopard Challenger on Saturday, and it's fantastic. Oh, that's very cool, man. And he has another Leopard Texas Toast, the uh, Light Up uh, Mud Flap Girl, he right? Does. Is that correct? Yes. Are we are we correct on that? Yes. We're going to make more Leopard and sell them to him. All right, just more Leopard. Yep. That's good. So Mike says he got it today, and it sounds excellent through the Deluxe Amp. So it's a Deluxe through a Deluxe. Oh, well, there you go. Matt, yeah. That's meant to yeah. be. Um, the Christian pickup is a whole nother level there, there's there. I am. I'm kind of surprised, Chris, that we don't make like almost exclusively that guitar. Uh-huh. Like, why doesn't everybody want that guitar? Mike Beckloff's getting one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, well so, so different. those are the first two, um, carve tops with Charlie Christian pickups in them. Yeah. And I think it took us a red hot minute to go, Oh, that might be fun. That yeah. might be cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, the one that that Mike got, Seal Beach Mike. Oh yeah, not Mike Becklaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the first uh, thinner one with that's the right. Charlie Christian. That's so right. we had to kind of think about that for a second and make sure it was going to go. I right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we wanted it to. Yeah, because yeah, we, yeah, we didn't know. Yeah, there was room in here to fit in the guitar. Yeah, mm -hmm. not poke out the back. Mm -hmm. Um, that's anyway, true because yeah. on the level threes that we did. The mm -hmm. body is thicker at the place where the Charlie Christian pickup goes. Yeah, it's still yeah, it's, it, yeah. It's, it's not it's not full thickness like where the bridge is. It's slightly mm -hmm. thinner, so we had to make sure yeah. that that was going to fit. We're doing about there. Yeah. yeah. So, Mike, it yeah. is maple binding on the neck. Mm -hmm. Yes, more maple. Uh, no, he doesn't have the the leopard. Uh, he has the leopard smuggler guitar with the for the J frame. Oh. Brian has that one. Yeah. Okay. We've done a but he still lot. Has a, of, is that one leopard? It is. Yeah, we've done so a lot. So he does have two leopard guitars. Yeah. So we need to okay. make more leopard. Yeah. Ones. yeah. Who has the Who has the mud flap girl? I Daily don't, Driver. I don't, I don't know. Okay. So um, anyway, so so Phil did a great. I know Phil's not watching because he's busy with stuff. But Phil, thank you so much for the very very kind words. You know, I have said in the past many times. And I think that you agree with me, Chris, that Phil McKnight has been a friend to the shop when he needn't be. Yeah. It's, 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 he's not getting anything out of being a friend of the shop. And he's always been cool to us. Yeah, he has been from the first time we met him. Yeah. Um, to the to the second time we met him mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. And then when you talk to him on the phone, he's always very um, chatty. Yeah. Yeah, he can talk. Yeah. There's a reason he can do a, a two-hour two thing. Hours. Yeah, I think that's, I think th those are moments in time. Everything he does, I think, is two hours. Could be, yeah. Let's maybe go out to lunch said. two hours later. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> two hours, two hours. Yeah. I would really like to see if I could get on Phil's podcast. Um, in oh, fact, I thought you said we're going to say case about coming out here for a class. Oh, that would be cool, too. Um, <laughs> but I would really like to go to, okay, so as you guys know, one of my things that I'm going to do this year is I'm going to drive around to or fly to, however it's going to work out, um, some boutique shops and, and, and outside of my immediate sphere. And I don't see why one of them probably isn't in Scottsdale. Like I know um, uh, John told me about some places. Um, and so, so, so why, you know, why not go out there and see if I can do uh, a lot. Oh, you know, here's the problem. I don't think I could do a two hour thing. I, that's a marathon. Oh, uh, come on. I don't know. Come on. I don't know. I, okay, here's what would really happen. I don't think I could get in. I couldn't dominate the conversation and interrupt Phil. He, he Maybe um, he would have you on for a little bit, and then he would shoo you off. Run along now. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's enough of that. Off I, you go. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have another call. Yeah. I'm here, Phil. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, um, so it was awesome to see that guitar. and. In answer to your questions, if you guys are asking, I, I can't read the, the thing right now. We did get some orders based on that. And what Joy and I have talked about is that kind of thinnest part of the wedge, the the notion of you kind of get your foot in the door. 
Yeah. And yeah. then you, once you get you know, a little bit in, you can, you can, you know, you mm-hmm. kind of push in a little. Well, and, it, and it's out there and tons of people have seen it and yeah. tons of people. And it, it, for a lot of people, it takes a long time to decide not only do I want a new guitar, I think we all want a new guitar, but what is that guitar going to be? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I've heard about this. I've heard about that. That might be neat. Oh, I'll, I'll look into this. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's the ball rolling, really. And the overwhelming majority of people who, saw that video and left a comment <laughs> were I mean because because like seven thousand people watched the the 15 minute segment guitar of the week. Yeah yeah on his and channel. and you know like like I don't know a hundred people commented or something. I whatever yeah well and there's there's well thirty thousand that have watched the other one. Okay. So so yeah so so the overwhelming majority of the people who commented yeah. were very very positive. Yeah now, I think there's two negative comments on there. Yeah but and, the, those two guys are shit asses. Well, be that as it may. Yeah. But now, and okay, now, and I'm going to full disclosure. Some of the people who commented are you guys watching mm-hmm. now. And thank you for, for, for commenting and stuff. Absolutely. And also thank, thanks to those who defended us. A couple of people defended to the, us. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the turkey comments. Turkeys. Let's take a quick super chat from Chris Hendricks, who says, looking good, sounding good. You were right. The tick was on mine. Up. Oh, Chris, um, the Phil McKnight thing was awesome. That it really was cool, and we knew yeah. it was going to be neat. Uh huh. And, and and but what I want you guys to know is, we did get some orders. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna circle back around. We did get some orders thanks to that. Um, and it's gonna be more more stuff, more work for us to keep up. But as of right now, it's not like the 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 wait time didn't go out to eight months all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so if you if you've been thinking about it and you're like, oh well, now's not a good time because now all of Phil's people are going to start buying stuff. Don't sweat it. We're we're still going to have like we I mean, we still have stuff in stock. Um, and uh, uh, and if you have a desire to get one, it's still a great time to do it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It was funny because um, I wasn't here Friday because of snow. Uh, I couldn't actually get out of my driveway, mm-hmm. um, but I was watching the reveal and somebody commented that uh, Phil was talking about our guitar right now. So I went over there and I looked and I said, yep, he's talking about our guitar. And I came back to your live stream with Jim while you were revealing the deluxe. And uh, I I was so excited for the live for this live stream the friday live stream to be over so i could go watch the phil one well i had no idea he was going to do it so i'm like let's hurry up and get this thing done you were you're like oh yeah before you know let's talk about it or you know whatever so so i had i yeah had no idea that it was going to be on and And it's a good thing we did talk about it because mike bought it and it's excellent the the level the challenge oh no i didn't mean that i meant that you and phil were going to talk about um about stuff and uh yeah well and 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 the deluxe too so so anyway and then it was like so then i I go back and i'm like you know gonna watch the phil thing Mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm a little nervous you know oh yeah well we didn't know i mean it's a cool guitar and it's a nice guitar and i i I take a lot of pride in it but i know let's take a super chat from brad and then i want to tell you guys a a quick story about the phil mcknight thing okay brad says that was a great preview of the level two thank you uh, congratulations thank you i saw a preview on the wall for his show this week and the silver level one is up on the wall of fame i don't know what that means but that sounds cool shark air says i broke a string on my level two should i just buy a new guitar yes um that's what happens when you you string up a guitar with spider webs oh that's right it had yeah, seven, seven, on seven it. to 38 yeah, right. on it. yeah maybe we should have if everyone buys a new guitar we should put sevens on everything yeah is it even 38 i think it might be 36 so i want to tell you guys something about the conversation that I had, the, the two conversations I had with Phil after he got that guitar. Mm-hmm. And they were once right before Christmas, I was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, hey, got the guitars. They look and sound great. Uh, looking forward to, you know, something. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, that kind of thing. Then I, I got a thing from him three or four weeks ago. Hey, gonna do a thing on the on the guitars. Um, give me a, give me a shout. Mm-hmm. And so every time I would call him, I'd miss him. And and you know, and so 
So I'm like, I had no idea when he was going to do the video. Yeah. So that, and and I thought you guys would probably you know talk about something or or I'm going to do it. I this thought week. so too. Yeah. 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 And, and then it popped up. So it was really cool and it was it was fun to watch and it's it's fun to watch people play our stuff and Absolutely. react to it. Um, yeah, because I that's one of my favorite things is uh, you know like when people come to classes and they'll pick up a guitar mm -hmm. or wherever and and it's fun to watch them you know kind of bond with it or go sure. oh i really like that one or oh i really like that one those are cool and play it and one of the things you always you say to, about the american icons is it's not what they sound like it's uh, what they make yeah. you feel like it's, it's that whole player experience yeah and i'm that. i'm more and more convinced that that has as much or more to do with um playing guitar as the actual mm -hmm. yeah sounds that that you make with it so by the way doug Santaniello says you need an old golfer's hat. I'm not sure if you need a hat that's old or an old guy's hat. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that I'll I'll take it as a, an old hat. I think that's probably what he means. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not the do you get a bowl of soup with that? Yeah, or, or yeah, whatever. It's yeah, good on you though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the emphasis uh -huh. on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Need, what yeah. what we're modifying? More pink pants. <laughs> <laughs> they might be pink they you don't even know yeah so um uh, 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 uh okay so hey chris you do look good they look good right you can see them on the screen hey you know what else looks cool well, i don't know if you look even better in person i don't know if you've noticed it have you seen my my new texas toe shirt well yes i did notice did that you did today. you see uh -huh. so yeah. i don't know if you guys know this but i have one of the uh, there's like maybe half a dozen of these floating around Four? Okay. So you know how you get one of these? Um, ask nice. Well, no. 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 <laughs> um, you have to buy a loaded challenger. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you get one of these, one of these cards. It's the t-shirt voucher. And it has a it has a QR code, and that will take you to uh the website and you can pick what size you want. And then you know who does it? Joy does it. So you know you actually get so it because Joy does get it. Because yeah. Yeah. So I have it X'd out so you can't pause the pause the video and zoom in on the QR code. Ha <laughs> ha. Because I know how clever you guys are. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you can Good get looking shirt. And it's it I, I like it because it's got kind of the um the Zorlac uh shut up and play uh -huh. guy. Although I don't know where the monkey came from, but I like it. And it says Texas Toast on. And you know what? So yeah, yes. shut up and play yeah. your guitar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um um uh, boy, there's a lot of stuff about golf and uh, yeah, and hats I don't have. Hats you may or may not have, but you. But let's, let's say this right now. <laughs> let's let's preempt all of this uh -huh. Chris don't hat talk. Chris hat. Do not, <laughs> do not send Chris a hat. I'm looking at you. Do <laughs> not send Chris a hat. The problem with the sentence "Do not send Chris a hat" mm -hmm. is it contains the sentence "Send Chris a hat." Yeah. How about how about do not. <laughs> Send me a hat. How about just no hats? No hats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I'll feel bad that I won't wear your hat. <laughs> what if someone sends you a cool one? Though? Then I might wear it, but. Okay. Remember some 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 butthead sent you a fez. Who was the butthead who did that? It might have been. Uh, I think it was SS or. or, or I, I, I think, uh, I think I it might have been uh, Rick Bernier. Rick. <laughs> I, I think it was. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it wasn't a cool fez. Well, though. So part of the problem is I'm just not very much a hat guy. I should be a hat guy. Okay, I should yeah. have a hat on at all times <laughs> at this point. But for whatever reason, I did not grow up a hat guy. I you am. Know, I, I, I'll wear a baseball cap, but you know, I'm I not much of a hat guy either. I have some other hats and, yeah. and, and I keep thinking, here's part of the problem. Okay. I don't have a significant other that can say yay or nay. Oh. So I am all on my own as to good looking I hat understand. and i'm not going to listen to a bunch of jamokes on the internet yeah, about yeah. what hat looks good on me because you know what not trying to attract another jamoke mm -hmm. yeah no more jamokes yeah never jamokes yeah so so yeah i need i need somebody really i need a a, a female companion that would buy me a hat or go do, hat shopping with me. Do you think the guitarologist is actually the guitarologist? Like huh? the guy who the, the guy who does all the Gibson videos? 
Is that him? No, I think the guitarologist um, was the guy that doesn't do videos anymore. He was the guy that used to dig stuff out of the uh, dumpsters. Oh, I think he. I think he's here or was oh, here. Yeah? So okay, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, you got- yeah. That that. Let, let me think, let me apologize, guys, because I know there's I know there's a lot of comments coming in and I can't I can't see them all because I'm old and, and I have to have my glass and I have to go like this to the screen to read Corey's super chat that says, do you have any oh crap shop moments you can share that have made you change your shop procedure or building techniques? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, OK, you think of one and I'll think. Oh, I have to actually think of one now. OK. Um okay so oh yeah i got one you got what, well there? yours is they'll probably be the same but. well uh why don't there's got to be some paint ones too all right sure okay i'll think of a paint one well okay so tell you what um uh brian duncan sent five dollars for the jamoke hat fund <laughs> um <laughs> so uh um i think one of the one of the things that that i would like to okay i'll tell you what i'll do a paint one because then you got you have a wood okay. one, right? All right. So one of the things that that we we started doing, um, I'm going to tell you guys two paint stories. One is the new level one paint. Eh, is as is is brand new, and the level one is it, it represents like probably the most tremendous value in American made boutique guitars right now because there's nothing like this that has you know and 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 it's very it's a very very i'm gonna say humble guitar it's a very it's a very basic instrument i like to say it's an entry point not an entry level guitar okay um and and the funny thing is the only thing about this instrument that's different from the level two well there's actually two things one is the amount of paint that's on it and the other is the amount of choices that you get so when it comes to the level one, you get P90s and you get a, a maple neck with a black Kingwood fretboard. And you you can get a Dylan P90s if you get the loaded one. Um, but it's got all hip, all the same hip shot hardware. It's the same neck. It's the same frets. It's all the same work. The, the difference is that it just has less paint on the body and neck. And recently we uh, we changed the way that we're doing um uh the level one finish and it's, it, it wasn't an oh crap thing but it was just like oh crap that's way better let's go with that and so yeah, we started doing we a bunch of way and it's about it's about it's about the same amount of work and we uh, it's just the consistency we've is, done about 10 of them now and yeah, they're they're percent way were way cool 60 percent um um yeah yeah and we also um uh we changed the the neck finish on them it used to be that they were oil yeah and now they are a hard finish which means yeah. i actually shoot paint onto yeah. the neck but it's still very very thin and because it's maple it doesn't require a bunch of sealing mm-hmm. to get it to mm-hmm. to do necky things so yeah so it, it's but but yeah so you get a mahogany body and a maple uh, neck and you get p90s and blah 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 so if, yeah. if you, you step up to the level two you get you get more paint and you get more choices but this yeah. is but this was the the level one finish was kind of an oh crap. In fact, the 73 finish was kind of an oh crap moment. Like, oh crap, that's wicked cool. And we went through a bunch of iterations of 70 of what would become the 73 finish. Yeah. And we've done a bunch of iterations of uh durable thin mm-hmm. too, which is what we call that one. Yeah. Um, SS says, love you guys. The guitars look fantastic. That's a that's a real deal product line. Thank you, SS. That means a lot because um yeah i i think that having a cool product line is a, is a good thing yeah yeah i didn't mean to cut you off chris though i know i always do so what what else about the oh crap finish uh finish stuff that i i just uh well i don't think anything with finish no but i mean would you agree that they they, they weren't like oh crap i almost like blew this oh yeah the no, shop up no but it was no, oh crap that were, looks awesome yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah they didn't all turn out great we had to go back and redo and yeah and fix and 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 the whole idea of uh the 70 or i'm sorry the the durable thin finish is that it's it's fairly easy to do mm-hmm. and doesn't take a lot of time and we have to go back and do it again yeah, it takes it's, yeah. way more time to redo it than it does to do it the first time and that's, so that's why it's what four hundred dollars less yeah. than the level yeah. two stuff. yeah and when we say you know, oh, it's less paint. It's not just less paint. It's less time 
sanding sealer and and mm -hmm. you know and, and doing all that other stuff too so it's not just here's four hundred dollars in paint um paint the guitar it's it's there's a lot of other stuff that goes into that uh level two finish um the the 73 finish i, I and, and, anyway. and i think i think ss really touched on that when he said the product the whole yeah product yeah looks cool so k sharp um, says that there was a paint question on phil's thing the only thing he, phil said was that it's not nitro lacquer um no and it's not nitro lacquer and i'm not going to tell you guys what it is uh but what i will tell you is how thin it is yeah it is thinner than a piece of notebook paper yes how's that okay the whole thing from wood to top coat yeah yeah, yeah. and this and the and if you're concerned about the thickness of finish the level one has almost no paint on it. Hardly it has paint, paint on it, but almost none. Yeah. There's almost nothing on there. I yeah. think Phil Phil was was a little surprised at how little paint there was. He's like, I don't even know if there is paint on this. Yeah. Remember how he said that? Yeah. 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 All of our finishes are thin. Yeah. Because for one thing, thin. you know, when, when you see a, a thick, thick paint job on a guitar, that's an indictment of the workforce, not the not the if they could do it thinner, they would. Mm -hmm. Because it, it still takes a lot of work to put that much paint onto a guitar. Yeah. The problem is, is if you have a sand through, you got to run that guitar back through. So the thicker the paint is when they start sanding on it, the less likely you are to have a sand through. That's why Asian made guitars, the paint is so damn thick because it's cheaper for them to put a bunch of that stuff on and then have people not sand through than it is to send it back through the, through the routine. Yeah. Um, so yeah it's not because they like thick paint it's not because you know they're dipping it and it's a, no. a one-step thing they have a conveyor and it goes around and around and around and it'll shoot and shoot and shoot um and it took it took a lot of a lot of time similar. for us to land on a combination of things to go from sealer coat actually to go from pore filler to top coat and and mm -hmm. whatever happens to be in between and it took us a long, long time to land on something that we really like. Yeah, well, and and, and you know, consistency is the name of the game, right? Yeah. Not only like, but be able to repeat over and over and over again. So, for example, with mahogany bodies, there's mahogany, and then there's mahogany. Even in the exact same species, mm -hmm. if, even when you're talking about hunter and mahogany, yeah. some of it's mm -hmm. less dense than other stuff, and it yeah, just, it just yeah, well, and, and even even machining it, even some of the first steps uh, of that wood can reveal a difference you know you joy start, says these guys know what they're doing you start machining it and and i'll well why is this mahogany all furry uh -huh. and fuzzy it just is that's just you, know, you get you get grain oriented slightly mm -hmm. different ways and all kinds of stuff can yeah happen. yeah and yeah. and and so then you get to to figure out well how do you you know finish that it's one thing to go well it's just fuzzy yeah. okay and you knock the fuzzies off it and then yeah and you march down the road and every step those fuzzies come back up, hop up again. Yeah. yeah. And so, well, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Every time, if you want to, everything, everything about building guitars for us now is process, running it through the Texas toast machine. The way that we do it. You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the next step is this. And the next step is this. And it's all about consistency and everyone. Irrespective of, of if we get same. a neck from Steve or if we right. make the neck or what. Yeah. 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 And, and so, you know, it's it's one thing to go. Well, I guess sometimes you got to send them back through sealer. Mm -hmm. Well, why is that? You know, let's yeah. let's figure out how to not have to do that because mm -hmm. that stops the machine. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. And you gotta and then you gotta back the machine up and and yeah, yeah. It's so it's it's all about processes and 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 sometimes they're big jumps in process. Sometimes they're little jumps in process. Mm -hmm. So, so Chris, what um uh. Jeffrey Egan says that the pics look amazing. Joyce says thank you. So you guys know, you realize that all the good pictures are not ones that Chris and I took. They're ones that Joy took. And we're slowly getting rid of all the kind of like cell phone pictures on the website. and they're the, All the, the studio pictures that Joy's been doing, and they really look good. Um, so what's your oh crap moment that you thought of when 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 you first, when Corey said, what's your, is, do you have an oh crap moment? Well, I think it was so, a woodworking. Thing. Yeah. So, um, a tool that we used to use a lot that we don't use anymore is mm. the, sh well, is the shaper mm -hmm. with the giant, what was it a two and a half inch 
cutting head i think it's three inch it was yeah. three inch okay yeah. anyway it's a it's a big shaper and the whole idea was that we'd be able to in one pass do the outside outline of a body and you can and it works really good when it works uh-huh. and it works it ruins stuff it's, when it doesn't work yeah and I, um every time i used it i i i, I am probably 50 percent on that tool the thing about that and, and more that, scared every single time I used it. The the thing about that tool that was was I think the worst possible thing we could have done is when we first got it, we knew we were going to use it like a great big router table. Uh-huh. And the reason that we went with the 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 biggest diameter uh cutter we could get is you get way less tear out the bigger the cutter you mm-hmm. use. So and boy, it did a it sure did a really nice job. And you you'd mm-hmm. run stuff through it and go. Ooh, look at that. And There's it just a, ran butter smooth all the way yep. around. Like, like you almost felt like you were daring it to go wrong yeah, yeah. until it did. And it, for there me, was, it was always actually putting the piece into it. There's a video of me when like we first got the shaper and it has all the safety stuff on it. Right now, it's just a great big cutting tool poking out of this table. Mm-hmm. Um, and when, but when we first got it, there was all kinds of safety fences and hold me down hold things me down. and it was made for molding to, to go through it was not designed the, the safety stuff was not intended for what we were using it for and you couldn't see anything no yeah. and there's a video of me coming real real close to chopping a part off of my heath and and if you, I'm not going to tell you which one it is but I think it's still up there it, it's, which it's part a, of your hand it was my left hand and I got sucked in and 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 it, I think it's still up there. Yeah. And I know, I know I didn't edit it out, but I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, I was really, really close to, to doing something stupid. Yeah. And you don't get too many chances to do something stupid with no cost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that we did was, I realize this sounds counterintuitive, but to make that tool safer, we took safety stuff off. And what we did was was we 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 kind of added new safety stuff. One of the things that we did was we went with these great big paddles mm. that were were uh, bolted, literally bolted, mm-hmm. not screwed, bolted to the template. And you would so that so that if it if it flung the piece, your hands were like this, not like this. Yeah. Your hands were like this, and they were above the cutter. Yeah. So so we, we took a bunch of safety stuff off of the 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 shaper because it was designed for molding, um, and. And you can go back and look at like the old Gibson and Dean and Hamer shapers. There's none of that molding safety stuff on theirs. Um, but yeah, you, you can, there is a great big jig that they use for whatever they happen to be shaping. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't, they don't go at it with their fingers like this. And that was a bad, bad mistake on my part for one of the first videos. And, and yeah, I, yeah, I and think if about I, that. Often. If I had a stack of a hundred bodies, mm-hmm. I could probably get the hang of it. But at the mm-hmm. rate that we used to do stuff when we first got that tool, I didn't get to use it often enough. Yeah. And so, you know, I I think one time I had, let's say I had four bodies that I was doing. Okay. And I did two of them. And then I had bad experience. And I finished that one. And then mm-hmm. I did one more. Well, all I can remember is is that bad experience. Yeah. And and then I didn't get to do any more bodies for two or three months, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so the only thing I remembered about that tool was ruining one body. Yeah. And uh yeah, and it happened instantly. It was like, well, there you go. Grudge Meyer sure. said his CNC router went turbo and turned a bit into shrapnel. I oh, turned yeah, I turned seen, a I, uh I've done that. I turned yeah. a half inch uh a uh, piece of round stock into a hitch pin in one second on that the pin probably, router. I don't that, that, that was, was early on. That was yeah. a stupid thing. Yeah, we broke a half inch bit not long ago on our on our uh, CNC machine. And the funny thing was, it just went. Bing. Yeah, that was yeah, a, that's right. I forgot bing, about that. Yeah, bing. yeah, and it's not cutting anymore. Well, so Chris, let's. Uh, so 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 that those were, I think those are good enough for oh oh sure oh shit moments. Okay, yeah, I think so. So yeah, let's I'll hear oh shit every once in a while from Matt, and usually it's because. You know, yeah, he can't find the sixty grit or something. I got, like I got that. paint on my new pants. Yeah, yeah, and I, what? Oh, what's going on? Ah, yeah, it's something small. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the 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 what we what we kind of bribed everybody to come out. There's 101 people watching, so that's oh, super cool. I'm glad that you guys are are back in the fold. I was getting a little bit concerned that people weren't 
weren't um, uh, weren't watching. So thank you to everybody who's watching. And I, I I'm trying to watch for for things. Uh, put like lots of uh, asterisks or question marks if you got a question, and I'll try to answer it. But but let's talk a little bit about what we what we what we've teased everyone with, what we've clickbaited you to come out here with, which was what would have happened if Paul Reed Smith. If the Paul Reed Smith story began in the age of the internet, that's my phone, not yours. Let me let me go to uh, go to silent here. So, um, do you guys remember when? Uh, are you old enough like me to remember when um, Paul Reed Smith wasn't a thing, and then you heard about him for the first time? I, and 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 if you are, was that in the eighties? Um, Lefty O says purple pimp hat. So, uh, yeah, m- maybe. Um, uh, so the the so do you remember a time when when Paul Reed Smith was not something and then it was something and how different it was from what was happening when it when they first started so that would have been 85 and i think that i bought my first paul reed smith in 88 um and it was a big big deal I had to drive eight hours to get it because there wasn't, you know, there wasn't like a, well, there weren't guitar centers everywhere then. And the, the, the shops in my town didn't carry Paul Reed Smith. I had to drive to Dallas. And um, there was one place in Dallas that had him. So I went there and, and I bought it. Um, but do you, do you remember, do you remember that Chris? When No, my first experience with Paul Reed Smith, we were actually talking about this earlier was probably seeing Ted Nugent with one on mm-hmm. MTV. And and everything that I knew about guitar, I, I knew from MTV and Guitar World magazine. Yep. Yep. Um, not even guitar player. That was far too fancy for me. Mm-hmm. I wanted to learn Welcome to the Jungle, the intro to Welcome to the Jungle, the intro to Everything. What about Sweet Child O' Mine? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. 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 If I could play the intro to any of that stuff, that was as good as as good as I was going to be at that point. And everything I saw, and and because of the MTV thing, and because of the music that I was listening to it at mm-hmm. the time, um, I was interested in what those guys played, except for Nuge. Yeah, he, I wondered why he wasn't playing a, a, a big, a big Birdland. Yeah. And, and really, it was all about Gibson for me, except I couldn't afford one. And then it was about Ibanez, which mm-hmm. I also couldn't afford. I remember like what what Jackson was making and ESP was yeah, a thing. Uh-huh. And and yeah, Ibanez yeah, and was, was kind of coming onto the scene. And, yeah, yeah. Real quick, Butch, you're gonna be in Denver. Yeah, yeah. Come by. Um uh, you're gonna be here in June too. And uh, Pops wants to know has there been an increase in interest or sales since the Phil McKnight feature? Absolutely, sir. It was really great of Phil to do that. Um Okay, so anyway, back to Paul Reed Smith in the in the in the eighties. But do you remember though, like like so so you talked about like Gibson and Fender uh, and that. Yeah. So it's so different from what would become this kind of superpower of Paul Reed Smith guitars. Yeah. And you wonder like what? So how many people would if if the internet was around then and Phil McKnight got the first Paul Reed Smith would would people say? Ah, that's not. Ah, I'm not, ah, I, don't really, I, I really want an iridescent yellow BC Rich uh, Iron Bird with yeah. a with a Floyd and and you know and and the whole Paul Reed. And, so it's it's a known thing now, right? But if you were around, if you were playing guitar, and if you were like making moves in 1985, yeah, you know what the guitar landscape looked like. You might be able to remember it even. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and it's 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 so vastly different from how it is now. Yeah, yeah. I want to know, and I, I don't know the answer to this. Okay. Where did Paul Reed Smith fall in the pricing of the American-made guitar market? They were point? they were expensive. Even even compared to a Gibson or a, a, a Fender. I was I was I I had I had enough money to buy a new Paul Reed Smith. And I'm like, oh, man, do I really want to drive to Dallas for this guitar that I've never even played? Mm-hmm. Maybe I should just here. Maybe I should just get the new Strat Plus. They were nine ninety nine. Okay. And I had I could have bought two of them. Okay. For the same money. That is very very interesting. Yeah. That although that's three years in. Uh huh. Yeah. The, to the to the yep. Paul Reed Smith thing, because most people at this point would buy two Strat Pluses. 
over the Paul Reed Smith? Yeah. Well, no, I, I think most people that or, you know. Or, or, well, I, a lot of people wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't buy the the PRS. They would buy a bunch of other guitars. Um, could, in, in could, a lot of ways. Well, okay, a lot of people. And again, that's that's 2024, really? right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the market's been kind of like okay, everybody knows about them. So what? What Dan says that like it seemed they seem to get really big really fast. What appealed to it you? It took about five years. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I can't put my always, finger on it. There's all those stories about, you know, him going around and, and his first order and, oh, shit, now i got to make all these guitars. i got to make 80-some guitars, yeah. What about the next 80? What was the story behind those? I don't know. Because it's one thing to sell a guitar. That's right. It's another thing to sell a bunch of guitars, mm -hmm. even even if it's 80 guitars or or 100 guitars or 10 guitars I can, over and over again. I can tell you that I bought my first Paul Reed Smith before I went to Roberto then. Uh -huh. What I can also tell you is that everybody I went to Roberto Venn with, everybody, was going to be the next Paul Reed Smith. Yeah. You know how that worked out. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a quick super chat from Ramondo, who says, just bought a Harley Benton. We'll swap for eight TTGs. <laughs> Sir, uh, I, I I appreciate the, 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 the two bucks, my friend. Thank you. Um, so, but... But yeah, it's a, it's a, the, the notion of what the, what the hive mind says about what's popular mm -hmm. and then the new thing comes out yeah and what, what the hive mind thinks of that. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to draw a parallel and guys, I'm not Paul Reed Smith. Okay. I have a lot of respect for the guys who who are my idols and Paul Reed Smith is one of my idols. I bought his guitars. He didn't buy mine. I'm the stepchild. The Paul. I got all that stuff. But I can't help but draw parallels to the people who were uh, were kind to us on Phil's show, and the the, the couple of people who kind of had negative things to say about about our guitars on Phil's show. And I wonder what would have happened. If the internet was around and here comes Paul Reed Smith with something that is nothing like you could get in 1985. Yeah. It was literally nothing like that existed. Mm -hmm. um, um, the closest thing you could get was a Les Paul and, or, or a Hamer or something like that. Yeah, and and even Hamer by then, later. Hamer was kind of starting to fade away. That's, that's also the other thing that I was wondering about, because I wasn't really into guitars in 1985. Mm -hmm. um, I started getting, I, I I liked guitars, I wanted guitars, but I didn't I didn't play um, very well. Or I, I took acoustic lessons mm -hmm. in elementary school and then I stopped. And I started getting back into guitars in 89, okay? okay. But um, but even in eight, in eighty nine, especially in early eighty nine, popular guitars had three things in common: they were Strats, mm -hmm. they had humbuckers, and they had Floyds. Or they were a Les Paul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And 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 in eighty nine, in eighty nine, they they could have been a Les Paul, but before Slash was a thing. Yeah. Well, and it was an old Les Paul. Nobody was yeah. interested in the new Les no. Paul. It was all no. old old Les Pauls. Yeah, yep. yeah. And that's actually yeah right. I mean yeah. I remember. Yeah, the the uh, I, I I actually went to a pawn shop and the guy asked me who I liked and one of yeah do you like this band or this band yeah and I liked the other band better and I ended up with a Strat a Hondo Strat okay. copy instead of a Hondo Les Paul copy yeah. but it was all about all about a uh, Slash yeah um but um yeah so so what else was going on in the guitar landscape when when this PRS thing hit hit the ground kramer was kramer was, was remember it was 85 yeah so like that crossroads movie with steve i hadn't come out so most people had no idea who steve i was mm -hmm. um and 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 it was before steve i started playing ivan yeah so so actually uh those yamaha um sg 2000s and the ivan as artists were actually not too far off from what yeah Smith was yeah. Gonna do. yeah um but yeah like like uh uh Eddie Van Halen was still really big. Um, that whole LA scene was mm -hmm. just coming into being super right. cool. Yeah. Um, and, and and remarkably, a guy who was popular two decades before would go on to make Paul Reed Smith like a a, a 
a, a I'm gonna say household name. Yeah, Carlos Santana. I'm like, well, Carlos Santana doesn't have a video. How's he gonna? You know what? What? Yeah, he do? yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I always kind of thought that that I, I don't even remember seeing ads for PRS, but I know they were in those magazines that I was reading. You know, but it just it, there wasn't anybody playing one that mm-hmm. that that I really looked up to. Damn Yankees, sort of sucks. <laughs> I, I I could so, not agree more. You know, yeah, I, I I was like, you know, why is the Nuge playing with these guys? Honestly, so Joy just said not all heroes wear capes, and I I want to say that the Nuge had a cape in that "Can You Take Me Higher" video. It was a it was a a, a zebra cape. Yeah, possibly. Romando, yeah. uh, we are accepting right now uh, for for payment. We're accepting. Uh, mostly just uh, uh it's easy to buy our guitars mm-hmm. they're available on the website um oh and uh you can uh, you can you can pay one off over time or you can do a firm mm-hmm. so so uh yeah which is cool i'm sorry chris uh let, let's take a quick super chat from, can, okay. can you, you remember, put a pin in where you sure. are we'll come right back to it on on damn yankees sucking yeah yeah, yeah 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 i can always remember that don't worry um, uh, Doug says, uh, in a super chat form, a lot of people criticize PRS because high prices, but got to admit the quality of builds are better than Gibson. Okay. Doug, that actually segues really nicely into what we're going to talk about, which is that's the thing that Paul Reed Smith really brought to the forefront was I'm going to say that more than Hamer, more than Ibanez in 1985, more than um, uh, Yamaha, for whatever reason, Paul Reed Smith made Gibson and Fender take notice that your the quality of your of your instrument needs to be on point. Mm-hmm. And I also think that you guys, for those of you who weren't around then or don't remember, there was a time when, and Paul Reed Smith will tell you this. In fact, I'm taking this directly from him. There was a time when he was like, I didn't think we would sell any of the the quilt maple stuff or the flame maple stuff, because at the time nobody wanted that. There was a there was a Paul Reed Smith guitar called the Metal, and it had like kind of not racing stripes, but like yeah, like, like kind of tribal. graphic yeah. kind of looking uh-huh. stuff. And he thought that's what they were going to sell, I think, but um, because that's what everybody was playing. And he's like, we don't want to we don't want a Floyd to say to say again in 1985 to say we're going to make a guitar company based on a guitar without a Floyd Rose. But again, it's a known thing now, but, but then that was, a, that was a whole, it was wild to think that that was a thing that people were, were going to buy. Yeah. Um, you remember everything had either a Kaler or a Floyd. Mm-hmm. If it was a, if it was, or a Floyd knockoff, especially like in the late eighties, everything had like a cheap yeah, or, or you didn't want it or it better be cheap. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think a lot of like Gibson's had a bunch of Kaler stuff on them uh, because they couldn't get Floyd's. I think because Kramer, I think, had that sewed up. Fender didn't have Floyd's. They didn't have Kramer. They didn't have Kaler's. They had their own kind of cuckoo. Uh, what, did, what did Fender have in 1985 for a. They had one called, I think, the. It wasn't a free flight. Zany. Was, yeah. Thing. yeah. yeah. They had a bunch of stuff that really was terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it it would be interesting to see. It would be interesting to because back then it was impossible to hate on anything mm-hmm. any bigger than yourself. I mean, you could get together with all your guitar playing friends and you could all hate, yeah, you know, PRS or whoever. But that's as far as it went, <laughs> right? I you couldn't you can't ca- you couldn't cast your hate yeah. worldwide. Yeah, there's there's you no... could write a letter to the editor of Guitar World and maybe yeah. Yeah, yeah, you. But but imagine. Why are okay, they so, so expensive. Thank you for bringing that up because that that kind of that kind of is exactly what I want to talk about. In in the age of everything has a a, a double locking tremolo. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine the 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 vitriol that would be spewed towards Paul Reed Smith by the internet hive mind of like you know the Kramer forum guy goes that sucks because yeah. it doesn't have a Floyd pops. Thank you very much. I I that means a lot to me that you would say that. By the way, about the our guitar versus the PRS uh, core or, or any of the American. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's nice of you. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It would be, it would be interesting to see. And I, I bet you, I bet you people will say, no, that's not what would have happened. Paul Reed Smith was always cool. Um, no one would have, would have 
dared to, you know, smack talk Paul Reed Smith. I'm sure if the internet, I bet you there was more than that. And if, if the internet was around, I bet you there'd be a lot. That wouldn't change anything. Paul Reed Smith still made an awesome guitar. Yeah. And I think they would still be, be a, a gigantic company. I'm just, it's just like, what would happen if the internet was around? Yeah. Would people be, or maybe people would be even quicker to embrace it and go, Hey, uh, Hey, CC DeVille, you should get this or Hey, George Lynch, you should play this or Hey, uh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, guy from some band that I like, what, who, Hey, uh, uh, Dizzy Dean from, uh, uh, who was it? Brittany Fox. From Brittany Fox. Yeah. You need to play this. Yeah, man. If, if they'd been. Yeah, rocking, rocking PRSs at their knees. Uh, yeah, all all metal flake PRS. Imagine this, Chris. The bands that were popular then, like so popular that you couldn't not see them. Mm-hmm. Those guys were so wildly popular that now they're like footnotes in music. Not all of them. A lot of those guys, though, like like, don't tell me you didn't like uh, Jeff LaBarge. You know, is that his name? Jeff from Labar. Labar. Yeah. yeah. Don't tell. Yeah. Labar was a different. Yeah. Don't tell me you don't like the guy from Cinderella because you did. Because I saw you like. Yeah. I mean, but, but yeah, I know you liked him, and you guys did all those kicks, and you had the long coats with the purple things. Trying and the, to trying to throw your yeah, yeah. He and he and the uh, the the bass player. Yeah. Throwing guitars over their shoulders, yeah. spinning guitars. Tom Kiefer never did that. He'd just throw the Telecaster. Yeah. Off stage and watch it and play Hopefully piano. Not hit the ground. Yeah. So yeah. So so yeah. you can't tell me you didn't like that stuff then, but you can tell me now that you that oh yeah well I, I didn't really like it then yeah, bull crap yeah. well and, and and a lot of those guys were all of the same uh-huh. you know oh so and so is playing this i gotta play uh-huh. that and, and actually watch the they, documentary they all, they about all I think the, charvel the charvel yeah and, with and the, it yeah. Was, yeah and it was you know um yeah there were there were there were only a couple of things you could get that weren't uh-huh. um you know fender or gibson and they'd all kind of run through all that stuff yeah. and so like 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 uh um uh, yeah you wanted some some different pickups that did some different stuff not that lame old stuff in 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 the gibsons so yeah yeah you went to charvel and he put in uh yeah duncan's so Rockbox is talking about how floyd's were just the, on the, the floodgates opened up in the uh, mid to late 80s uh solaris moon says i love figured wood tops anything with figured wood but yeah but back then it was all it about wasn't paint. a thing. It yeah, was all about yeah. graphics. And yeah, uh, a dude from wow, Def Leppard had uh, yeah. Yeah, nagels painted on his. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very, very 80s. Very, um, yeah, pop culture so, stuff. So you wonder, with all the people who said, oh, no, I, 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 I never really liked any of that hair stuff. Or I didn't really like any of that, uh, what, whatever that was popular then. Um, like a That's Prince a, played a Paul Reed Smith. Yeah. But, but. But nobody did. Nobody played that stuff. So to go, oh, I would have never said anything bad about Paul Reed Smith back in the 80s. I loved him. I think it, maybe, but for a lot of guys, it was just completely off the radar. I know that's Could that be. was my deal. Could be. Was I wasn't really aware of what PRS was until the early 90s. Yeah. You know, and okay. all right. So you weren't okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, as as a as a real thing, I'm I, I'm sure I knew it was a, a guitar and and but it wasn't something i was like oh yeah okay yeah I want, so i want one of those guys if I you didn't think nobody because nobody that i knew played them if you're watching uh if you're watching this after it's live put a uh, um put an elephant emoji in the comment section and then tell me your your paul reed smith story and tell me why you like him or why you didn't like him and tell me what you liked in 1985 tell me if you were around in 1985 but remember the elephant emoji because the elephant in the room is what would have happened if paul reed smith started out in the age of the internet i'd like to know what you guys think if you if you've made it this far i appreciate it um let do you, are you do you have anything else that you want to add to that, Chris? Before we kind of start wrapping. Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. Do you know how many PRSs I played in my life? One. None. Didn't you play one of mine? I don't think I played it. I think I looked at it. You didn't play that uh, that McCarty Rosewood that I had. No. I thought that you had. Okay. No. Not to my knowledge. Okay. All right. I should I should remedy that. Yeah. You should. Steve wants to know, do you ever listen to Justin Johnson on YouTube? No, I have no idea who that is. He says he is the one on 
the TV when you were on the speakeasy playing a Cadillac guitar? Um, ca Help me out, Steve. Uh, is that the Cadillac guitars? Like uh, the the name? I, I, I guess I don't. I guess I don't know that that story. The when we were in the speakeasy, if we were in the speakeasy, we were probably getting uh, getting liquored up. Think things happen. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, Shark Air says you talk me into my next guitar will be a PRS. Well, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, Robox says, Matt, have you received any of my emails? Uh, I don't think so, Steve. Um, uh, but I have, but, but I have been working on your guitars. Uh, like I said, all of the, uh, everything that I do on, uh, Thursdays and Fridays is work on old, old projects. So, um, they're, they're, I see them. They're right over there. I'm looking at them. Oh, wait, no, they're not. Cause I'm not in the shop. I'm in the underground, un undisclosed location, underground bunker. Sorry. Yeah. They're way to, Yeah. Um, but yes, I am working on your guitars. So, um, so anyway, yeah, Paul Reed Smith is a cool story. You know, lots, I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of, um, guitar building heroes and Paul Reed Smith is definitely one of them. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So if you don't have a Paul Reed Smith, you should get one. Or if you want to, if you want to get the, the, the thing that inspired me, if you want to be, if you want to get the guitar that was inspired by the Paul, it, you know how long it took to get something Chris, what we are what we are doing now is really a dream that has been realized after, well, since since the late '80s. You know, we we we've worked out a lot of things and came up with coming up with a carb top was a big big one. Mm -hmm. So um, I I absolutely love the um, uh, the level ones and level twos, level fours too. You know, those are carb tops as well. The only difference is those are handmade. Um, we still offer the level three, but we have only sold one in the last six months. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not suggesting that like, we're going to like discontinue the level three, but it's basically the all handmade flat top guitar with a nice maple top and it's hollow. Um, but yeah. What do you think about the double cutaway? Um, people people ask me about that. They're like, "So you've got the when it the when it comes, it the... comes, man." Mm -hmm. um, you know, I still want to do it. Yeah. Um, you know what? Everything that we've done previously, I've been lukewarm on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to do a double cut just so we have a double cut. We what we what we will not be doing with our double cut design is using the headstock that we use on the Challenger and the Icon. Um, but you know what? You could do if you wanted a Paul Reed Smith. Um, you could come out to the Paul Reed Smith workshop. There's two in September. By the way, the one that uh, the one, I think it's the first one. I thought we were sold out, but we actually had a couple of cancellations. Um, uh, so there's two spots left. So you can either get into, there's a couple spots for the September, I think it's September 2nd. And there's four spots for September 9th. So they're back to back Paul Reed Smith workshops. Um, we are using the, um, all the, the Steve is doing the bodies for us. So you get exactly the Paul Reed Smith um, uh, violin carved top, nice piece of maple, et cetera, et cetera. Those are going to be fun, fun. So Shark Air, what you should do is instead of buying a Paul Reed Smith, if you want to support Texas Toast Guitars because you're so cool and you want to get a Paul Reed Smith because you like Paul Reed Smith, boom, bingo, we got it covered. You can show up to the workshop and you'll come in on Monday with, Million dollar smile. You'll walk out with everything you walked in with and a Paul Reed Smith. And a nice guitar. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Yep. All right, gang. Well, it's time for us to call it a night. Um let's um uh let's go ahead and um uh let's give way for Dylan, who will be out here next week. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with Dylan and 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 uh, and Texas Toast doing live streams. Oh. One thing though, before anybody asks, there will not be a reveal tomorrow, right? No Correct. reveal tomorrow because we have to clean the shop. So no reveal tomorrow, but I will do a Sunday video. Oh, I apologize for not doing a Sunday video, um, but there will be a really cool uh, kind of an old school, um, uh, old school style retro gear video for Sunday. So anyway, gang, we will talk to you uh, uh, on Sunday. If not before, we won't talk to you before. Um, and we'll see you next week if you're showing up for the build, uh, Ultimate Build with Dylan. Guys, we will see you then. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you next time.